Thanks, Lauren. Uh, so uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, it's been a great experience for me. Um, and uh, I want to thank all the teachers who have uh, gone before. Um, it's really been a pleasure to be a part of those classes and uh, uh, perhaps a bit intimidating to follow them, but you know, uh, we'll do our best. Um, so uh, what's been attracting my attention recently uh, is this notion of finer and this notion of uh, dimensionality. Um, and I want to, that word can be scary for some people. So for me, it's really um, making progress on, uh, on your appointed path, on your, your job. Uh, whatever whatever you feel is important to you in your life. Um, so uh, I wanted to share a story uh, because uh, for me, this notion of finer is uh, um, intertwined with, with uh, comfort and with uh, uh, interest or excitement. Uh, there's some balance there that has to be achieved. So, I was talking to a friend of mine who in his uh, teenage years had really gone through um, a lot of uh, uh, rough times, drug addiction, gangs, violence. Um, and uh, he went to an Outward Bound program and, and came back and we were talking. Uh, and uh, I asked him, you know, what was it that changed um, between the before the outward bound, which was you know really problematic, and you know even he was not happy with his life, right? Uh, but he, he he wasn't really able to manage it. Um, and uh, after, and uh, you know he said was well, he just got he was more comfortable um, uh, before he and he told me about the experience of outward bound. So the first day of outward bound, or you know very shortly, they have them uh, pointing. Uh, canoe through a creek and he said you know the first day you know it's hot walking through a creek uh kind of the canoe is bugging me and and uh there's bugs in the water you know so you're hot and you're thirsty but there's bugs in the water so you're you're constantly spitting out of the water looking for your water bottle trying to you know stay hydrated and he said but you know the, the third day you just drink the water you don't worry about the bugs and and you know it was the same water the same canoe he just got more comfortable and so he said he was able to carry that you know into his life when he returned that uh, even if he was in the same kind of situation he didn't get uncomfortable and so he was able to process uh, what was going on so uh so uh, i want to talk about um, using comfort um, balanced with interest as uh, sort of the the way signs, the waypoints in um, in uh, understanding where to put your attention, understanding which of these. You now we have lots of practice. We have the two by two and the up down and the side to side. And um, but but you know how do you how do you put your attention between focusing on doing something and focusing on um, feeling your internal. So um, I don't know if you've been sitting or standing all day. Um, if you've been sitting all day, please stand. If you've been standing all day, feel part, please find someplace comfortable to sit. But whatever you do, um, I want us to sort of get quiet. I'm getting warm, so I'm going to take this off. And um, for about a minute, I just want, uh, I'm gonna encourage everyone to check in with themselves, check in with inside, whatever feels right, and just feel into your comfort. Don't do too much if you can help it, but if anything really hurts, then, then, then please make an adjustment. Um, I'm not asking you to fix anything, uh, I'm just asking you to to see uh, what you can do simply that that improves your comfort.
Uh, and I think there was a little more than a minute. So um, I'd like uh, I'd like to get as much feedback as I can. So you know, uh, if you want to open mic or you want to use the chat, I can read that stuff too. So um, you know, uh, for me. Uh, actually, I, I've been working on getting comfortable for about 45 minutes, so I did a little bit of cheating, but um, for me, it was my body line. I, uh, uh, my upper spine in particular, I think, really came into some nice alignment, relieved some stress, and uh, this little nagging neck pain that I've been having for a couple of days is really not even there. So I'm hoping we can share some trade secrets amongst us, and uh, you can tell me what works for you. Hi, Ken. Uh, Bob here. Hi, Bob. Uh, I just did a simple breathing exercise I learned from Toei Sensei many years ago, and it helped me to calm down because I was in a hurry to get here, make sure I wasn't late, and helped me to kind of calm down. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Hey, Ken. Bob Leichner. Hey, Bob. Hi. Um, similar process. Settling. Letting my weight drop. Feeling the places where I had little kinks that were blocking any sense of flow that were making it difficult to relax and be comfortable in my body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Bob Nolet, um, maybe you could share uh, the name of that exercise with us, uh, if you get a chance. So it's just a standing exercise that Toei Sensei describes in his books. Uh, you're basically inhaling, closing your hands, coming up on the balls of your feet, putting a little pressure down with your hands in your center. Exhaling, opening your hands and moving your hands in front of your center, and that's it. But if you have either of his books, Aikido in Daily Life or Key in Daily Life, the exercise is in there. Okay. Maybe I can get Lauren to give everyone a reference. Okay. Hi, Kenneth. Uh, for me, it was every time that I feel I'm too much compressed, I stand up from the chair and go for a walk. So it was really important to notice how am I seated? Uh, how am I sitting? And then notice if I have some pain on my back. So first of all, I bring to, to my seat position and then started to adjust my breath and, and my upper body. Yeah, what is it about that sitting thing that we all want to do this? I mean, I don't know, but I see I do it and I see it around. Hopefully none of you do. Um, but uh, I, 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 yeah, I think it's really important if we can just train ourselves to, you know, you feel the weight come into the chair. Um, and um, that's on my list. I'm working on that. One. Anybody else? have yeah. any? Yeah, Kenny, um, I uh, like this. Um, sort of mantra that Annie Leonard, George Leonard's wife created called grace. And it's sort of uh, starting out with grounding and relaxing the shoulders and, and just getting aware of my environment, the space I'm in, my feet on the floor and a centering. And then at the end, there's sort of an energizing feeling, energy flowing through all my limbs, my body, and that flow of energy is a nice feeling, a sort of engagement in my relaxation. So, Grace. Grace, sounds good. Mm -hmm. We could all use a little bit more of that. Well, I could. I won't speak for you. <laughs> Maybe one last. Hi, Kenny. It's Ariana. Hi, Ariana. Hi. Um, for me, it was like 
probably the first moment today where I was just really becoming present and um, without expectation, expectation, just, just being just, um, I mean, you waited like for us for a while. And uh, so I'm so used to getting some instructions and um, it was just like kind of brutal, honest presence without any expectation. So it was fun. Thank you. Good, good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that reminds me. Uh, I heard from, uh, actually, I was talking to Richard Moon, uh, who's on the call, and I might have to ask you to repeat it if you can, um, uh, about the Osensei's oh, quote about um, facing if you the pure do, void. If you do not blend, actually, I have it here. Let me get it exactly right. If Forgive me. Uh, if you do not blend with the emptiness of the pure void, that's it. If you do not blend with the emptiness of the pure void, you will never know the path of Aiki. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, so for me, that really calls me to let go of all the things I believe about myself, all the baggage I've accumulated in my life, all the expectations people have of me and I have of myself, and really try to get to this finer, this, this um, truer, more resonant, um, interesting and comfortable place where I can, you know, uh, bring Aikido into the world. And, and I want to say one of the reasons I chose not to, you know, not to wear a, a dogi is um, uh, my, my focus these days is um, how to bring Aikido more into daily life, more into daily practice. I mean, for those of you who know me, I've been a dojo rat for 25 years. I used to train multiple hours a day, six days a week. I love the dojo. Don't misunderstand. Um, and uh, and I, you know, I, I think you know these days uh, maybe my mission is to bring some of the practice out of the dojo and, and into daily life. So um, maybe let's stand up again. And uh, I'm kind of playing in uh, in pandemic mode. I know. I don't know, maybe we're moving out of, out of this pandemic into the next one. Maybe it's our last pandemic. Some of you, uh, some people have had more time in the dojo, but um, let's work with an imaginary uke. And if you have room, I just want to do a partner two-step. So we're just going to do a partner two-step. But maybe before we get started, Find your balance. Whatever your practice is, I like to lean slightly. Actually, I really like Roy's turning practice. <clears throat> Whatever works for you, you've, had, you've got a mouth, enough of them, I think. Find your center. Make some room for your imaginary UK. And let's do a two step. So that was just me. Now let me see if I can find my imaginary UK. There we go.
Okay. So what I'd like to talk about is what is it in daily life that prevents, if something prevents you from working this, you know, grounded, centered practice, this feeling into your, who you want yourself to be. You know, Sensei was talking the other day, I, I, I really uh, liked the way he ended uh, the Friday session with, you know, tell me your story about your story. I don't care if anyone else believes you. Not the story that anyone else believes, but your story about you. Um, so for me, getting in touch with that story, this practice is an integral part of it, right? Getting rid of the rest of the world and what the world expects of me, what I think I owe the world, and, and getting back to, to um, you know, who I am and where I come from. So uh, if any of that resonates for you, I'd like to hear about it. Um, if it doesn't, I appreciate your bearing with us. Hey, Ken, this is Russ. Uh, you know, when you just, when you just did that, you know, uh, the two step, and then you said, now add your imaginary partner. I actually could feel the imaginary partner there. I was quite surprised by that. You know, like it changed something instantly, and I'm not sure why. So, interesting exercise. Yeah, me too. I, I actually, I know I said, get your and then I started, and I'm like, where'd they go? I couldn't find them. Um, uh, so, I, I think maybe we operate on autopilot, you know? Uh, default mode network, as they say. Um, and what can we do to uh, not see the world the way we've always seen it? Um, so it's a really interesting, uh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't get into it, but um, we don't see reality as it is. It's not possible. We don't have the senses. We don't have the capacity. We make up a story about reality, so we might as well make up a story that works for us. Right, and that's inclusive of other of other people or spirits or whatever, you know. Right, because I know when I'm uncomfortable, I hurt people in ways that I don't even mean to. And, and I don't even notice it for a week and a half, you know. But when I'm comfortable, when nothing's hurting me, I'm actually able to, to sense what's hurting others better. And instead of this, you know, war of attrition, we can, uh, well, we can um, be, uh, Wow. Ken, Danny here. Uh, it, it's interesting you, <laughs> you use the words, the war of attrition. I, I, um, I like that. I, I challenged myself to have a day without conflict. And uh, nice. I found it's impossible. In, in my mind, I was generally always in conflict for something, complaining or judging. And, and it's a very, very... Well, for me, it was, it was difficult. And um, this question of, of reality, yeah, there was no reality there. It was all about my image, about who I wanted people to see me as. And often I wanted people to see me as uh, good and clever, but really on the other side of that, there's some Danny and, um, and, uh, and, all the opposites of what I want to be seen. And um, I found that exercise 
and like Ross, very interesting. As soon as I introduced the partner, I had distinct different feelings from my right side to my left side, how welcoming I was. And um, I found that really interesting that as a question to me, like the dominant side, uh, what I'm presenting on the dominant side, uh, which I use a lot, and um, he was a bit of a crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks. Thank you. And I want to weigh in what Danny and Ross were saying that as well, it's when you, you created a, a wonderful space this afternoon for us to open up to each other about our inner feelings about ourselves and challenging ourselves into the void. And doing the two-step in the dojo, you refer to all your hours in the dojo. For me, doing the two-step in the dojo, um, when I'm facing my partner, it takes a little bit of time for me to open up to my partner at that point in the two-step where we're facing each other and feeling that connection from para to para. But in this imaginary partner, it, it, it was surprisingly, I say, uh, uh, agree with Ross that, wow, I had a place where I was opening up to this imaginary energy that I was facing and I switched my direction in the, in the two-step with a left and a right harmony to see, to check it all out, both left and right. And certainly there is a nice opening that occurred and I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, you know, it, it reminds me, and I was gonna do the demo and I don't have the paper. Um, I might, uh, I might uh, give up a minute now, maybe get, maybe get 30 seconds later. But uh, Richard, if you've ever seen, does this demonstration with two pieces of paper where he points them at each other and they just naturally create this three-dimensional structure. You have these two pieces of paper in exact conflict, right? Well, is it conflict or is it complementary opposition? I don't know. But when they come together, they create this very strong three-dimensional structure. Whereas with each piece of paper, neither one can hold anything. You know, so it reminds me of, of those senseis, uh, I call it the golden bridge, and I think it's just the bridge between heaven and earth, where we accept the opposite. So Danny, you accept that you are, you know, you, you want your day, you, at least you do not bring conflict into it. And even if the conflict shows up, Right to not resist that peace and to fully accept it, um, you know, changes uh, how we relate to it and and how how this person who brought me, you know, assuming there's a person who brought this conflict, you know, they just want to be heard. They didn't want to make you mad, right? But but we get into this conflicted state, and then I know I start hurting people, and 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 uh, um, it's not about them. 98% of it is projection. It's all me. So um, I'm working on trying to understand how to manage my internal state. And I want to say, um, even though the external world doesn't change that quickly, my practice has really changed how I feel about the world. You know, Donald Trump will probably get back on Twitter. I mean, it's not like... Uh, just because I started feeling better, he lost the election. But um, because I I feel better about myself, I, I know I'm creating I'm creating a space uh, where um, I, I I contribute to harmony, and uh, I contribute less to disharmony than I used to, and uh, that just feels like great progress. Um, I'm feeling pretty complete. So uh, I think maybe this is a good time for us to take a little break. Lauren? All right. Uh, thank you, Ken. And uh, <clears throat> if nobody has any more questions for Kenny, uh, we'll take a five minute break and come back uh, for uh, Susan Spence, Sensei. And I so, just thought, uh, Ken, I just thought that was a really uh, unique 
and you know very much appreciated perspective thanks for that that was well done again yeah, lou birmingham here just uh Great way to start the day. I'm not deliberately, by the way, trying to hide myself. For whatever reason, my camera is just not working. It was working three hours ago, but what the hell? But anyway, um, Zoom, Lou, but yeah, go ahead. I tried three times, so but it, I'll try to get. Anyway, um, I really liked how you presented it. I like I like the fact you're talking about multi dimensions, our perception of reality, and so thank you very much. Thank you, Luke, glad you could make it. Thank you. And any other people want to say anything at this moment? Uh, Ken will be back to, at the end uh, as part of the Q&A, but uh, I want to thank Kenny for uh, really bringing it uh, to uh, daily life. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, uh, ask Ken to uh, Say goodbye, wave goodbye, Kenny, and we're on a five minute break. Thank you.
And if we can all come back. <clears throat> and welcome back. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, Susan Spence, a uh, longtime student of Nado Sensei's and a longtime uh, member of this community. Uh, she's now at Mount Shasta in California, a beautiful place to live. And uh, Susan, thank you very much. You're on your own. Thank you. We'll bow in. So when I was first asked to teach this class, uh, I got the email. And my initial response to myself was, absolutely not. There's no way I can stand and teach and talk for 30 minutes for a Zoom class. I've never taught a Zoom class before. But at the same time, a working title popped into my head. And we'll talk more about that working title, but it was Checks and Balances. And to back up a little bit, I've been training with Nado Sensei. I started training with him back in, I think it was 1985, many years ago. I have off and on not been close to a dojo or have been working so much that I didn't have time to step in the dojo. So I've been on and off the map over the years. And what I could rely on every time I stepped back on the map with Nido Sensei is that he would challenge me to reach for another level, a deeper level. And I had been accustomed to challenging myself as an athlete but I had never had the joy and the depth of experience of being challenged on all levels. And for that sensei, I am eternally grateful. I have been enormously grateful for this past year for whoever came up with the idea for these Zoom classes and whoever and all the production folks and of course Nado Sensei because I feel like over the past year with these classes I have grown uh, deeply and progressed in ways I, I never dreamed of in the work that I do. Um, I'm a physical therapist, I have been one for many years and I have always um, appreciated that what I learned in Aikido is applicable in so many ways to my work, as well as, of course, to life. And with my times off the mat, I have always tried to find my own checks and balances. Where am I today? on the ground? Am I centered? Am I balanced? So all of those things that we've been working on for the past weeks of this um, seminar, and as those of you who have been in the Zoom classes know, I have used over the past year wood cutting as a process for me to line up myself line up myself in relation to the world. Uh, and fortunately for you, my internet connection at home is not very good. So you won't have to suffer through a wood cutting exhibition, but I will talk about it because again, it has been an important part of how I have incorporated the work that we have done in the Zoom classes into my life and into my work. And I'm starting out sitting today because I want to work a little bit on what Kenneth introduced earlier. You know, who am I right now? Where am I? 
And so for all of you who want to sit, um, we're gonna do just some easy stretches here. So just a simple stretch. Settle in. If you were at the Zoom class last night, Nadeo Sensei presented uh, one by one, two by two, three by three process. So check in, what level are you at right now? Where are you? Can you feel yourself on the chair? Can you feel your feet on the ground? Can you feel that connection between your center and your hand? Try a different stretch. What shifts? Okay. So right now we're just establishing a level. This is the level that we're working at, that we're starting with. It's important to know where you start from. Um, so standing. Back to, again, basic. Simple stretch. So for me, there was a shift in from sit to stand. Ground connection is a little clearer. Back is opening up a little bit. Okay, again, right now I'm just establishing where I'm starting from. Switch to a different stretch and just see what does that open up in your system. I always like putting a stretch because it something about what it does to my spine and connection with my feet that I really enjoy. Okay, so that's the level that you're starting with. I typically for me will also use an up, down beat. It often starts spiraling. And I check right and left balance. Last week, Roy did just a spectacular demonstration of his process that was beautiful in that sense of balance, that balance with up, down, um, right, left. So again, use whatever you want to double check this level. And if anyone wants to make any comments about just where they're starting from, that level, uh, feel free. And if not, um, as Nadeau Sensei talked about last night, we have a choice. We have a choice to ask for that next level. So going back to your favorite stretch, if you want, just invite that next level to show itself. Whatever shows is just fine, but acknowledge that you have asked for another level, that you're opening up to another level here. So back to a basic stretch. And 
And for me here, there's a level of depth that is opened up that was definitely not here before. So that's one way I know that I have shifted levels. Anyone have any comments or observations about this next level? Hi, Spence Sensei, Linda from San Diego. Um, yeah, I noticed that my um, breathing opened up. I felt like I had more space. At first, I was like, is it okay to move? Does she want us to tend con? I you know, didn't feel very free. And at the second level, I have like felt a little more, um, uh, less resistance to trying yeah. things and experimenting. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Anybody else, any comments about this next level? Uh, for me, Susan, it was uh, clearly more structurally sound. So I felt that uh, there was more uh, left and right structurally balanced uh, and kind of a sound feeling to uh, my myself. Yeah. Isn't that amazing and beautiful how well and how easily the system does that when you make that choice and you open up to it and the system automatically responds with something better something new something fuller hi susan uh, bob noah here First time around, of course, most of the physical action is in front of your body where your hands and your wrists are. With that second level, I began to feel my whole body, even though I was still doing the same move. Say that last part one more time, Noah. I began to feel my whole body, even though I was still doing the same movement the same way with my awareness had gone from just the front to the whole body. Yes, thank you. So again, if you would like, you know, this second level, if you like, if you feel like moving a little bit more, um, again, I happen to like this, this movement for checking my depth, checking the balance, If you feel like using a two-step, go for it. That's fine. Use what helps you, again, check where you are. Okay, and settling back in, we're going to head back to whichever is your preferred basic stretch. Again, asking, you know, as Mendoza Sensei often says, play the game, okay? There's another level here, okay? We established ourselves nicely at that level. So I have that choice to step in and say, okay, there is, I know there's more, there is another level here. I'm gonna do the best I can to experience that level. And right now, just choosing to use this form of a basic stretch.
And I realized that something really significant has shifted in my relationship with the ground, which at this point is much, much deeper than here. And my connection through my center to the heavens. Again, there's another level of, let's say, clarity of my connection with the ground, my connection with the space around me. Any comments here on this next level? This is Lauren, your process is working. <laughs> How so? You know, I can feel it uh, centering and quieting yeah. and uh, 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 more uh, movement flowing from within. It's a beautiful system, isn't it? And it just is so natural. We ask for it and the system responds and allows us to grow. And these hand stretches that you've started with, the Kodagaishi and the Nikyo and so on, they're so familiar, so nostalgic at this moment. Thank yes. you. And again, if you want to play with what's happening at this level with a different form, feel free. Susan, I'm finding that at this level, especially with the, the hand stretches, that there's a moment of in between that I'm connected to. I, I don't disconnect from one movement to the next. And there's a distinct in between that I'm becoming um, accustomed to or, or feeling more of than I did before. Yeah. Thank very you. nice, very fluid, um, permanent connection, it seems. Thank or you. At this time. <laughs> Anyone feeling, I mean, for me, um, I always get quite a bit of a rush with teaching, certainly with presenting. Um, anyone feeling that just rush of energy coming through? Hi, Susan. You know, for me, I, I feel a tingling in my bones and, and I know nothing has changed, uh, you know, not that much has changed about my state since we started, but as I connect in, there's this hum, aliveness in my, it feels like it's in my bones. It's just so pleasurable, so much joy. Yes. Do you feel that may be the beginning of equality? Um, I, I think uh, I think it's the energy before the quality because now I am I'm starting to warm up. You know, I can really, uh, you know, I'm starting to sweat a little bit. So I think it's that it's the energy rush before the quality. Nice. Yeah. Very good. So. That's a wonderful example of knowing where you are, mapping, not quite a quality yet, but there's something there that's starting to happen. So respecting that, cool, there is that happening and I know where I am. 
I know that if I stay with this, quality will show. Thank you, Kenny. You're welcome. And Susan, this is Marin in the East Coast. The, for me, there's a lot of, there's a sense of just bubblingness, this column of bubbling sort of energy that's starting to come out, out of the ground and just flow. Just by settling in, by these stretches, by just settling, it's just starting to really bubble. Again, it's just beautiful the way the system responds, isn't it? Hey. So, to take just a moment's break. Um, and for those of you who, again, have been on the Zoom classes, um, know that I have used wood chopping as, as an alignment practice. I use that because it helps me, again, line up with myself. It helps me line up with, you know, an inanimate object, but it gives me a way to practice my process. Um, again, it has given me a way to incorporate the things that we've been working on in the Zoom classes over the past year. So, if I line up here, can I line up with myself as a character, a woodchopper character? Um, can I line up fully with the situation, which is all the things in the environment that support me as a woodchopper? And I, again, I have respected so much what I have learned over the years by being challenged. And I enjoy challenging myself at times. So whether it's a really gnarly piece of wood or my latest challenge was practicing wood chopping at night. Uh, as you can see, it worked. I still have both my feet. Um, and it really was a wonderful <laughs> practice. I have to do it from a good space. I do it with the headlamp which is an interesting practice because I don't have a fixed sight because as I move, the, the light on my object moves. So I, it helped me get to another level again of trusting my process. Can I do this in the dark? Um, I've always enjoyed the times that we've trained with closing our eyes. Again, it's a challenge to the system and lo and behold, given the chance, the system responds beautifully to the challenge. Uh, shall we go back around on one more level? So a little break. There's a really nice level three. Again, consciously choosing to step into this practice, accepting that there is, and choosing there's another level here, there's another level of being that I can get to, the simple, simple wrist stretching practice. Doesn't mean I have to crank on my wrist more. It means I get to be fuller here. So something is shifting again. I don't immediately have words for it, but I'll trust that that's okay and that it will show itself. What 
happened initially was that everything went quiet and still. I don't know why that happened. I don't have to know why. I'm just going to hang out here and play with it a little bit more. I think sometimes we expect ourselves to change and to automatically be comfortable with that change, to automatically be competent at that level. That's not necessarily the case. But if you give yourself the time and hang in there a little bit, more will show. And again, training with the Dao Sensei, I have so come to appreciate that value of just hanging out and trusting and letting the system show what it has to offer. So anybody, anything happening at this next level here? Susan, this is Patrick. Hi. Yeah, what I just noticed was that I find that the hand that is going to be stretched, I was previously just grabbing it and stretching it, but now the hand itself is presenting itself eagerly. Yes. And almost even with flair and is sort of eager to participate. That's beautiful. <laughs> that is beautiful. And again, it's the beauty of the system. The system wants to show it. Thank you, Patrick. Anyone else? Yes, Susan, Linda from San Diego again. Um, I was noticing not that I was breathing more deeply, although that was happening too, but it was like, there's more air. Yes. There's more space. I have more room. I was noticing, oh yeah, there are mountains out here. Yeah. I, my vision expanded. There's just yeah. whoosh. <laughs> yes. It's lovely, isn't it? So automatically, the situation, the situation opens up. So in a very similar sense, you know, the space around me is more full. My hands, there, there's, there's more compression of something going on in here and out. But if I look that way, about 20 feet, there's a rosemary plant. Uh -huh. And there are these incredible bees on it. And in the short time we've been doing this, the light has been shifting and changing and the shadows moving. It's, yeah, there's a physical change. There's a change in the system, but also my awareness of the space around yes. is at a finer level. Yes. And that is, yes, thank you very much. That is something that I have found, uh, particularly over these past maybe six months in the work that I do as a physical therapist. The more I settle, the more I open, the more I consciously choose that what used to be you know, a relationship with myself and the patient opens up to my relationship, my connection with the patient, uh, if it's a child, his or her family, his or her, or her extended family. And not that I haven't been aware that all those pieces are important, but there's something about the work that we have been doing and the opening and the growth that is happening that the depth and the level of the situation, the um, all of the pieces are again wanting to be there, wanting to talk, wanting to communicate, um, wanting to participate, eagerly participating, as Patrick said. So thank you for that. Anyone else? Hi, Susan. This is Joanna. Uh, I felt that 
as my body got uh, more unified, uh, my hands asked for being closer one another and then do the, the wrist stretch, you know, and then when it shows up, it kind of uh, completed the movement. And I don't know if that's the dimension, which word would be appropriate, but it's kind of uh, j just closing the circle. So my body was going to movement and then when my hands meet one another for the Kotegaish or each, each one of the movement, it just closed the, the cycle kind of that. So, and then they bond and then they stay together longer. Yes. Yeah, that connection yeah. automatically. Yes, thank you. And also fulfilling the entire body. It wasn't only a, a hand, hand movement, but started with the whole body. So what happens if you open up and space shows up again you're not quite sure where you are well back to basics is there a level of balance here is there a level of up down balance if i'm still not sure i'm going to go back to that prior prior level I'm going to go back to that previous level um, Okay, that's where I was. And open back up and say, okay, something happened at that new level, something I'm unfamiliar with, something that I'm not sure how to talk about, I'm not sure how to express. But I love, absolutely love the percentage game that Nadeau talks about. You know, what percent can I experience this? Can I, it's not 100%, okay. How much can I do? What can I do here? And to the best of my ability, boom, here I am at this next level. So I think, are we about out of time, Lauren? You have a few minutes more if you want. A few minutes? Uh, you have a few minutes more if you'd like. Okay. Or uh, whenever you're ready. Would anyone else like to speak about their, um, their checks? and what they do in asking for that next level. Um, I want to thank uh, Lauren in particular, who after his class talked about how we have all of these processes, we have these basic techniques, we have all of these things available to us. We have these amazing teachers but it is up to each of us individually to go deeper and to become more of who we can be. I know that I am a far better person. I am a far better physical therapist than I would have been without Aikido. So any last thoughts? Well, Susan, I just want to thank you for uh, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful class. Just uh, once again, the simplicity, uh, simple things can be profound. Yeah, it was very, um, I, I don't like the word, but holistic in the sense, I think, you know, you've been with Bob so long and what's <laughs> encapsulated in your words is really a kind of a, a global picture of, of where we've been. And I thought, nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will bow out. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you so much. And we'll have a five minute break. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you. For anyone who hasn't done one of these uh, 30 minute sessions or, you know, tried to teach in 30 minutes, it's amazing how fast 30 minute goes. <laughs> hey, Ken. Indeed. Yeah. I had to move my uh, camera. You want to just spot my um, position here once more? Am I good here? You're good, Richard. All right. So that's all right. It works fine. Thank you, folks. See you in a minute.
And we're back for the 12th in the 12 instructors, Richard Moon Sensei uh, is going to uh, lead us in this last class of the workshop. I want to thank everybody and uh, really turn it over to Richard and uh, see where we go. Richard Moon, you're on. Uh, love being here with you. Love that we're all here together. Let's go ahead, if you'd like, stand. And, and, and Richard, if you could step back about six inches, we can see your feet. Thank you. <clears throat> and if you can't hear me, if my instructions aren't clear, please don't hesitate to ask. I want to say in terms of bowing, you should always be bowing. And if you think about it, every time you exhale, there's a little bow there. And I like to think of every one of those as a bow to the universe. As though Sensei said, when you bow to the universe, it bows back to you. When you call out the name of the divine, it echoes inside of you. So we always start, I always start, with listening to the impulse to breathe. Now, if I asked you to take a deep breath, you could do that, and we would say that was you breathing. Now, when you listen to this impulse, should we call that you? How should we talk about that? And I'd like to say there's a volitional or intentional aspect of you that breathes when I say take a deep breath and you do it. And then there's a, I'm going to use a cheap word here, autonomical, because I don't know what it means aspect of yourself that breathes when you're not thinking about it. And I want to say that you can start to bring those together by paying attention to your experience, listening to the impulse to breathe. And I love to say not hearing the impulse, not sitting and watching yourself have an impulse, listening, you know, like listening to it. And then you can start to get into a dialogue with it and speak to it and be part of it and then the two of you become something else again so i'm going to come in close and i'm going to ask you to just just begin to let yourself feel any movement that you would like to feel and if you'd like to go ahead and express that movement i thought where susan took us set this up this whole connection of feeling as i call it the most Miss undervalued word in the, in the English language. As you start to feel, it's a portal, a doorway, a, a travel device. It just it's it's a doorway into a completely different realm. And as you let go of thought, and please stay with your practice of letting yourself move. But I want to come in close so my words are clearer, and let your movement expand and express more and i like the waking up in the morning practice and i also like the drunk practice and i just like to play with letting that movement start to come through and like the connection with the breath what's important to me here is that you're connecting to something direct in your own experience i don't care how we want to talk about it which you it is the two used together one plus one equals one something that's happening in you at this moment, your true north, your bestowed mission, your expression of Take Musa, the divine birth of creativity. And let that come through in movement. And when the movement wants to slow down, let it, when it wants to go back into activity. So I wanna say love gives birth to harmony. Harmony brings forth joy, and joy is the greatest treasure. And that was what I understood was O Sensei's Aikido and Threesy lessons. And it's why for me, the mat practice was always in service of that larger connection. And I never worried that much about the mat or the techniques or the, and I knew there was something for me on the martial side, I pursued it. But to me, it was about this. The secret of Aikido is to harmonize yourself with the movement of the universe. Now, I don't know what that means. 
and going off and thinking about it doesn't seem highly valuable to me. But feeling yourself moving with the impulse to breathe, which is your aliveness, which is your life force, which is your spirit, your direct connection to the totality, okay? So he said, if you do not blend with the emptiness of the pure void, you will never know the path of I keep. And I wanna say, and if you blend, as you blend with the impulse to breathe, you can start to lead. You can begin to play with this force of life, this power, this possibility that you're given, okay? But once you blend, you can lead, but it's not the same you. And that's what's so important, I think, in the practices, if you could see what Susan was teaching there, what Bob's been teaching, what everyone's been showing to some large degree, and really where Ken started with just going into this you begin to transition into a different relationship to the totality. And I'm gonna say, for language, that's not the same you. Now, when he said <clears throat> about love, he said, as I, harmony, is common with I, love, I decided to name my unique Budo Aikido. Although the word Aiki is an old one, the word which was used by warriors in the past is fundamentally different than that of mine. And so I wanna warn you in the same way, I'm gonna play with using words in different ways. I, I told Ken, I like the story of a woman arguing with some gentleman in the street and he says, you ought to consult the dictionary. And she says, what for, it's my language. So we're gonna create some maybe different ways of playing with it. I want to go back to the breath and the movement that's starting to happen here. And it should just work for you because it works for you. And there's nothing else that has to happen there. And if nothing's happening, stand. Just like they say, if you can't feel the impulse to breathe, just don't breathe for a moment. And I think you will. Okay. So this is the way I like to wake up and work a lot. And if you understood at my age now, this is good enough. But then I can take it into my basic imaginary uke. Oh, here comes a showman strike, Yurimi Nage. Oh, here comes another one, oh, Kota Gaishi. And uh, it's 50 years for me, folks. It's, it's getting old. I mean, it's beautiful and I love it and I appreciate it. But like the breath, I studied pranayama for years. I could give you a hundred breathing exercises. But that's why I come back. You just listen to your impulse to breathe. You start to make that connection. The universe will bow back to you. It will echo inside of you. And you'll feel it in your, in your quality. So as you bow to the universe in your exhale and just relax and release a little bit, the muscles automatic. So I call it a line with the force of gravity, whatever. I like to play with one foot when I'm on a good day. Two, when I'm not so good, but whatever it takes to get you in this place where you can just let into it and let that downward sinking force just sink open as my friend Chris Thorson calls it, settle open as my instructor Robert Lego calls it. I like to go sink open, settle open, sink open, settle open, play the game and just let that happen. And then at this point, I start to bring in my randori, my imaginary uke's in unexpected attacks, a guy coming in here, you could just see it striking from my head and I move my head just slightly off the line. So I bring my hand up to guide his hand just by me. I'm into this place, grab him by the hair, tip his neck back. No, I won't crush his throat here, I'll just you're me out again. <laughs> and I play those games. So here comes another one in this side with a Yoko type with a beer bottle in his hand, strike to the side of the head. Now you can take one, make up one for yourself right now and just grab somebody and brutalize them a little bit. And then do it again and see if you can move a little more in harmony with them, a little less frightened, if you will, a little less aggressive, and still more in control of the situation, okay? 
And I just have these people as kick coming down there. So I brush it by, put the back, get the leg up, throw the guy into the corner. I hope you're having fun with your own food gaze and stuff like that, right? And so I'll bring in two or three, I'll do those games. Uh, I practice my gravity shadow to the point where everything I do has a quality of impact that means something. And I have a lot of fun because that's really what I came here to do. I was never that interested in the martial side a little. God knows I went and trained with all the guys. And, but I've always been, uh, and I loftily call it an artist, uh, you know, someone who plays with art, with creativity, with that connection with the divine force and letting it express through us. And so letting yourself share who you are, all right? So I want to take one more round with, um, with our movement here and uh, talk about some of the other ways that I like to play. And then obviously in 30 minutes, all I can do is show them to you for a minute and you'll do it if you want. Touch in if you need more guidance. But to me, um, again, this sense of letting what's unique to you in your own experience at this moment in time be fully felt, to really feel where you are, to really harmonize with it, non-resistance, complete non-resistance to whatever is flowing through you at the moment and, uh, and letting it express so that when you're in the world, who you are expresses. And like Ken was saying, you know, you're in a place here where you express it more and more harmoniously, more and more effectively, less and less, uh, discord or whatever, you're creating reciprocating echoes that through your loving spirit, create more harmony in the world and we all enjoy ourselves more instead of spending, you know, whatever percentage of our national debt on weapons and defense. And really more importantly, whatever aspect or percentage of our own personal energy we spend on defensiveness or pretense or whatever, okay? So last phase of the movement, what I like to do when I can get past needing to stretch and uh, my paranoid delusions about all my imaginary attackers, which represent, uh, well, no, since I said winning over the discord in your own mind, in Marin, we call that my stinking expletive deleted attitude. And, you know, just getting that into a place where I felt better and always, like I say, I, I don't think anyone ever had more fun on the map than I did. A lot of play, I don't mean to say more than anyone else, but I don't think anyone else had more. I just had the most beautiful time in this expression of this connection with this energy, which, you know, I came in out of yoga knowing that. So the last part of our movement now is just absolute free space. Let's take a quick minute, dive back down from our, whatever we were there, martial artist or, and let another kind of movement come out. I'm going to put some music on in the background. We're just going to go for a minute or two. But I just want you to practice that sense of letting free form space come out, not needing a partner, not needing an audience, not needing to go to a club, not just you anytime you want. And you, know, you can do it without the music, I think. And here I let go of most of the martial stuff that I usually am conscious of when I'm doing my attackers. And now I'm just dancing, and maybe they're a partner if I'm dancing with them, but it's just motion that has no meaning other than how it feels to me. And it's your turn. We do not hear your music. I don't hear it either. And let me try it once more here. Have your fun, we're just gonna do it for a minute. Looking out at the years go by, so many songs. 
So if anyone's stopping you, dance with them. That's how you do. All right, do a last standing minute. And any movement that completes this phase for you. Okay. Lauren, how are we on time? You're good. Uh, how much time left? Uh, half an hour. Oh, okay. Well, plenty more than plenty. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of um, I guess I'd go back to kind of where Susan was, where Ken was starting that same thing of just kind of getting into a better place with yourself. And my thing I want to add to what Susan was playing with, where you call up the next dimension. I have a, a, an approach I take, which is I square away with this dimension until the universe is bored with me being here and the next dimension starts to show up. Now, they're really just two portals, two windows two ways of talking about come across some interesting information of late that just talks about stuff we know it's not new information to us but the way they speak about it both confirms and I think sort of expands the understanding uh, easy the eye open and settle okay so the latest stuff is as we go into a situation we either move towards it, expanding into it as if it were a challenge. Oh boy, let me run the race and win. Uh, or we um, see it as a threat and then we begin to close down in a different way. So I think you all know all this. And it's why that sense of, we go, oh yeah, easy the eye. You just get to a better place. And back to what Ken was saying a lot, and, and I talked a lot about this in the three easy lessons tape, that, when you enter into a situation in a positive way, you've changed the situation already. And I'm talking back into the world, I don't get into fights, but I'm in a lot of negotiations with people and coming in in a spirit that says, you know, I'd like this to be good. And I'm sure we can do something, you know, in a positive, that whatever that energy is, that quality of just, and that comes out as Ken was saying, because I'm now the words are funny, comfortable with myself. Well, what does that mean? That means that I'm letting myself be who I am. I'm just able to share who I am. But that's not me in some little place, what they call the default mode network, the I, running off on these trips about what's going on. It's me in an experiential state at a <clears throat> connection to my own gravity shadow at a level of totality that's secure enough that it doesn't have to be aggressive because it's not operating out of fear. It's just here in a way of, you know, I'm gonna hit the nail to pound the nail in. I'm not angry at the nail. I'm just doing whatever needs to happen in that moment as precisely and effectively as I can because I'm, I've done the process Susan was doing. I'm in my best operating place and I'm starting to connect to something now that hits that realm where, you know, and Bob says, it's like, you can't exactly feel it now. Are we sensing something? And I'd say, Let's play with that borderline for a minute in your own experience of when you feel into who you are, and I'm going to come back to Bob, said uh, yourself to be present as self. What does that mean to you? You know, and what's your experiential experience of that process? I don't want what you think about it. I want to know 
and you know, I want to know, I mean, I want you to just be in that sense of feeling your true self present as self. And then this thing about, he said, unwind. And the thing that was really interesting was in this one study, and I'm not sure how much I believe the science of it, but like Black Elk said, whether or not this happened, I don't know. But if you look, you can see that it's true. Anyhow, they said in the face of good emotions, the DNA began to unwind. And Bob's always in that thing where he's um, twisted the OB belt, you know, whatever, and then he talked about us getting wrapped up in that way. And I think in a sense, he said, calm the spirit, return to the source. I just say, sink, open, settle into the opening, and be in the experience. Give all your attention to what you're feeling. And that's why I say most undervalued word in the English language. That feeling process is what guides you. Uh, if you've ever seen the seven samurai, the scene where they're testing the samurai, when they come into the hut and the guy's hiding behind the door with the stick or whatever. Uh, that sense of awareness that, that was developed at a whole other level of being than what the conscious self could ever do. It's a, a proximity sense, a magnetic sense of being. You can feel it in yourself and you do feel it when someone gets too close to you or, or anything like that. So this process of connecting with yourself, best operating place, both asking for and knowing that whether you ask for it or not, the next dimension of you is knocking. And it may not be that fixed as a dimensional barrier or something, but it's just that you're starting to feel more something and begin to be in harmony with that and bring that forward in a way that is in harmony with the rest of the universe and then share who you are. Put your note into the symphony, okay? Play your note beautifully and make the symphony brilliant and gorgeous and fantastic. And that's what I think comes out of this process. So kind of coming back a little bit more to where Ken started, the more you are aligned, the more that volitional and autonomic aspects or the male and masculine and feminine or the yin and the yang or the divine and the mundane aspects become a unified field of being. And, uh, I always check with the gravity shadow because the tendency that oh yeah, that would, man, that, okay. Back to this. And I, I grab a couple of imaginary ukes, put my arms, try and lift me up. And I just connect to the gravity shadow all the way to the center of the earth and, you know, whatever. Exercises that help you shift into a quality of connection with yourself. All right. So I'm back to whatever the two aspects are, uh, what I understand in the terminology of standing on the floating bridge, unifying the mundane and the divine, being that bridge that is both at the same time or both and neither at the same time. And you can tell it's happening, I think back to where Ken started to, and then Susan was talking about that shift. For a second, my friends, you just aren't sure. And that's the place where either it becomes a threat and you start to uh, talk about it, think about it, go study it, uh, avoid it, you know, whatever. Or you recognize that this is your life force that you're connecting with, that, you're, that you are. When we shift from that identity to the essential self, it comes through in an effortless and a beautiful way. And all that movement in, I think that what Osensei left us, and certainly this process Bob's been working with the energy and all, all his different explanations or explorations or uh, practices that have, you know, the one by ones and on and on, Bob Robert, so on. A beautiful depiction of the fact that you're not a limited person. You're not really who you think you are. Uh, and no one knows. You know, what was your name before your parents were born? As you start to play into that, uh, I think Ken said the same, just a complete emptiness of the pure void. Uh, then you're allowed to come forward new and you can always take that old suit of clothes and put it back on. It's always there. But I think as you start to play with this, uh, less and less would you want to. And more and more do you recognize that letting go of whatever you think 
and your stinking expletive deleted attitude or the discord in your own mind, and you start to move into this, it transforms how you feel, transforms how you interact in the world. It transforms the reciprocating echoes that you generate in the world. And I don't know how much more you can do at this point. So I think on that note, I'll stop talking and we can talk together. And I'll bring the other teachers in and we'll just wrap it up for a little while or whatever. And then I have asked Bob if he would stick around and say a few words before we close it off. So Lauren, how would you like to finish this? Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Richard. And uh, I haven't danced in years, so. Thank you. Uh, I'd like uh, to ask the three teachers from today to, I'm going to spotlight you and bring you on. And uh, if you turn on your cameras and uh, take uh, questions sort of as a group and see what people want to say, what you want to say about each other. Because, uh, you know, it's the first time you've ever met in the three of you, right? So, uh, uh, you know, it's a it's probably you know a stunning you know surprise to. Uh... Okay, and so everybody, the best question you've got: What's the one that really would make a difference to us together now? No pressure. Repeat that question. Richard is asking people to throw the best question they can at the three of you. Yeah, my question was, what was their question? Right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks very much. And my question is, how do you remember to consciously choose? Say that again, please, Danny. How do you remember to consciously choose? How do you stay awake to that? Well, I think, Danny, if I, if I understand our, our training to some degree, what we do, you know, they make a magnet by <clears throat> magnetizing it, but, or you can do the electric thing, you know, put the wire around it, magnetize it, but then it stops as soon as you stop the electricity, unless you put the metal under pressure and then the magnet becomes much more permanent. So we go into a dojo, we put ourselves under pressure and we practice choosing to do it from a harmonious state and like I say, harmony like charity begins at home if we're really doing our practice. And, and I think you do that until it's like what we call proprioceptive, till like when you're on, on your bicycle and you start to tip to the right, you turn into it. You don't think about it. You could be smoking a joint at the same time and you'd still know exactly where, you know, it's like, so you train it in over and over again. And that's the beauty of this art is it gives us a way to over and over again look at that choice and then make it consciously until that becomes who we are. That's a story. These are my stories. Only through your own experience. Can you know and Susan? And uh, Susan, yeah. you had something to say, I think? Not, not yet. Not yet. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, anybody else? can't remember the word for it but um yeah there's a there's a a place where it has to be your autonomic response to discomfort you know so um yeah practice over and over again tell you okay to be an asshole um maybe you're an asshole enough by yourself you don't need anybody's help um but uh yeah, it's it's um, do it consciously until it becomes unconscious. And the one thing I remember from raising kids is it's okay to go back after you've fucked it up and say, "Huh, I'd like to have done that differently. Can we can we run that tape again and 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 you know make a different you know get into a different process of NLP and a couple other you know." places do that so uh, it's great if you catch it in real time but but um it's okay to do it over too hey lauren yep this is yarrow i have a, a general question um 
So, you know, this is the first time that I've, uh, you know, seen this and this has been online, you know, the O Sensei Revisited. And it seems to me that there are a lot of inter interpretations of what O Sensei was trying to do. And that uh, even if you followed one or followed, um, just did a keto, you may not actually get to that inter interpretation or you may not be doing what Osensei was thinking about when he was doing it. And my my thing is like, there's so many different ways to approach it. I feel kind of like you can't say, here's the magic way and it worked for me, it should work for you. Here's the mad, you know, sort of uh, way to move and way to think. And I feel like, you know, to some degree, people going along this path really have to take some kind of responsibility for what resonates with them. And I think that's what Osensei was talking about. And he wasn't saying you have to do exactly what he does. I think he was saying, uh, you know, you have to find what resonates inside of you and then manifest or express that. You know, I heard a story where- Now that sounds, that sounds right. That sounds like exactly what I think everyone has been saying this whole time in terms of each of us must find their own doorway, portal, whatever it is, their own experience of it. And all these things are there to help people go forward. And you can use them in whatever way is positive for you. And I don't think anyone was in any way, uh, you know, worried about which one was right or not, because even for you, different ones will be right at different times. Okay, that's my, because I was, you know, if I don't do, very comey or, you know, one of those techniques, um, the rolling exercise, if, if I don't get something from that, but I get something from Tai Chi or feel it from there, you know, I, I have kind of feel guilty, but for me, there's maybe it will resonate with me more at a different time, I'm guessing, you know, and it's not, it's not to worry if you like opera or if you don't like opera, right. if you like rock <laughs> or you don't like rock, just follow what your own joy and interest, love, harmony, joy is the greatest treasure. Yeah. And I love Aikido. I think it's a great way to express it, but there's, you know, there's no magic potion, I think, is what I'm saying. Only in you. Anybody else? Yeah, I have a comment. I think it's been great um, weeks here. Um, really enjoyed them. Um, would like to know of um, wh where you're going to go from here, um, like each of you personally, um, what do you see in next step as in growth or um, or your next uh, adventure in the, in your um, practice? And uh, Tucker, we don't have your picture. At, uh, where are you calling in from? Um, San Jose. Um, Aikido San Jose. Very good, wonderful. Sorry. There we go. I was so, just wondering. Uh, could you, so oh. your question again, please. Well, I'm wondering, you know, it's been great these weeks and want to know um, where we're going to go from here um, and what each of you kind of foresees your path um, going from this point uh, to another level or next level. I, I'm not clear. Are you asking about these seminars or are you asking about people's practice? No, I'm asking about people's practice. Okay, very good. So I'm sorry. Uh, Susan, you want to take a whack at that? What are you working on now? Next? Where do you go from here? Sure. Um, Richard was talking about experience experiencing our fuller self, um, original self. And I am striving to continue this process of experiencing the fuller of myself and the fuller of myself in relation with uh, clients I work with, the children I work with, um, So that I become uh, a 
better healer so that I become a better communicator. Um, but continuing to, again, refine and work with the process in my daily life and work. And Richard, you want to respond? Where where do you want to go next with your practice? Well, you know, um, been kind of trying to emphasize this with all of you in my comments in Bob's class that um, it's really staying with these fundamental practices, and they themselves will take you into experiences that will lead you into whatever is next for you at this time. If I'm so into connecting with that directly through your experience of life and vitality and stuff. So I, I, I don't see the fundamental practices changing. Um, I just see the, uh, the refinement that Susan was talking about just continuing to increase in the sense that, um, like Pablo Casal said at the end of his life, when asked if he was still practicing eight hours a day, he said, uh, yes, I am. And you know what? I'm getting better. <laughs> and Kenny? Um, uh, I, I see this coming more and more to here and now. Um, I actually, I started a biodiesel company. Um, I used to be very concerned about um, what I could do to help others live better. And, and uh, I'm more concerned now about what I can do to help myself live better. All right, well, thanks for your honesty. Appreciate it. Thanks for the question. Thank you, Tucker. And uh, yeah. we have time for uh, another question if here. somebody'd like to chime in. Yeah, I think I'm muted there. First off, Ken, thanks for the advice. I can finally get my picture up. Um, my mug is there for you all. Uh, I want to thank uh, Ken for starting with some uh, just really insightful uh, ways of shifting our, our reality patterns. Susan, thank you so much for continuing that. And then uh, Richard Sensei, what can I say? You're, you're a true original. You're, you're too unique to explain, baby, but I loved it. And just keep on going. It's very, very inspiring. I say, I say that sincerely and seriously, very inspiring. Um, all the classes we've had and ending with the three of you, and of course, with all the background help from Lauren and Ken, yourself, and whomever else is, is helping in the background, very, very inspiring. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. It was funny. I was just last night thinking about the time you came out to visit us and what a fun night we had. How did I get over in that time? Yes, we did. <laughs> Thank you. Well, if we're if we're good here, I'd say let's take an extra minute because um, both Ken and I did some work. Uh, I did very little. Ken did a whole lot more, and of course, most of the work was done. Uh, by Lauren on so many different levels, both creatively and in active production and in coordination and uh, really uh, managing all the folks and stuff. So I really can't thank him enough and invite you to. And I know you also want to thank all the teachers who contributed. And I thought, I suppose we could open all the mics, go thank you, thank you, thank you. But what I thought the best way to thank all of us, thank each other for what we've gotten here is to pay it forward and share it with people as you go as you go forward and i i think lauren if you want to have any note before we just invite bob to come in and say anything he'd like to before we close it well uh yeah so richard and ken it's been a a practice working with you this past year and uh an important part of my shugyo and uh we make you know, it as, as I, helpful as we can be <laughs> and um uh you know it's been a team effort truly and uh i want to thank uh uh brad and katja uh, of course for the friday night classes that uh 
gotten this far. Uh, but all 12 instructors uh, for this little workshop uh, have uh, helped us remember O Sensei, you know, to revisit him. The key thing that Nado Sensei makes clear to us every every week is that O Sensei left us a process, right? That Aikido is a process, and that uh, you know, in this process, we have a a chance to learn about ourselves and to refine ourselves and to improve ourselves. And, uh, uh, you know, Teja Bell Sensei and Harry Concepcion and Jack Wada let us off. It was a month ago that Teja, you know, showed us, you know, his version of the rowing exercise and pointed out how so many different disciplines over so many centuries have used some version of this rowing. And the other day I'm uh, in Tai Chi class, Jack Wada Sensei talked to us about how in Tai Chi, there's a version of rowing, pushing and inhaling and exhaling, and really was uh, inspiring. Um, Bob Leichner, Elaine Yoder, myself, Ross Madden, Roy Johnson, Bob Noah. And then today, the three of you have been uh, just uh, uplifting, uplifting. And so, uh, it's been my uh, my honor and pleasure to work with you all and to uh, practice with you all. Uh, you know, when we started the uh, virtual dojos, uh, uh, Ken and Richard and I talked a lot about how we could possibly do something to sustain the community during the, the Aikido community without a dojo. And uh, uh, these uh, this this uh, four four week strange, never done it before kind of seminar has shown that the community is uh, vibrant and thriving in its own way. And uh, uh, I'm humbled by people's uh, dedication uh, to uh, this uh, Aikido O Sensei's path. Um, I think that Nado Sensei may be lurking someplace close by. I don't know if he's yeah, he's, we all uh, meditate on his spirit. Do you think he'll show up? Uh, oh, there he is. I'm here. Hey, uh, uh, thank you, everybody who's taught these Saturday sessions. Uh, very, very nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I've got what? I okay. <laughs> I'm looking at the TV. No, I <laughs> I'll never make it in showbiz. Oh, uh, no, you're doing great. You're doing well, great. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I really don't have anything because I'm exhausted after Friday night. Uh, uh, so I don't have anything. If you have something, I'm, I'm here for a minute or two. <laughs> Well, I'm going to speak for uh, all of the teachers and say thank you, because uh, we uh, we would die. I would be lost without having found you, and so thank you for your hard work and dedication. Thank you, my my job. And somebody was much asking, much where, where much appreciated. Oh. And somebody was asking about where were you. Guys, Where go with your work. I I might say I'm okay with my job. Uh, I'd like to get a little clearer on mission. And for me, mission is a big, big word. I'd like to get a little clearer on my mission. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Susan started to bring up something. I think it came up. I think it was bouncing off a question from Moon Friday night and. And she was talking about developing herself to communicate with her clients and patients and whatever better. Uh, so uh, Susan and I have been working a lot on uh, a self to self dialogue and what's the possibilities there and what does this entail? And anyways, that's where me and Susan are heading. Uh, so uh, more work on self uh, and uh, for me, uh, 
interesting. What is mission? I know what my job is. I know my real job is, but what's my mission? Ooh, should be fun to play. That's all I have to say. What do you got to say? Sorry, that we really, really appreciate what you've done to create this community and uh, and give us all something that we've been able to you know, share with you and share with each other. Bob, it really is appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to say thank you for making Ostense a present reality. He was a great man in his time, and that's fine. But what you've done, Sensei, is make O Sensei for us a present reality. And that is what carries us forward. I think the question or the comment, uh, I'm sorry to catch the name, San Jose, about uh, Tucker. Tucker. Uh, Mr. Tucker. Uh, you know, I understand your problem and what teacher is right or this teacher says. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't Tucker. That was Yarrow. Okay. Whoever. Uh, it's very difficult. Uh, if uh, a guy's a martial artist, then he would have seen no sensei and picked up certain things that are important as a martial artist. Uh, 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 Sao Tome was also an artist. He was heavy into artists. Uh, so he saw aspect that touched him because he was an artist. So he'd probably talk and look and whatever from his viewpoint. I was interested in a sense of consciousness of how the universe works. That's all I ever talked to Sensei about. I never talked to Sensei about Nikyos or Songkyos, for God's sake. Uh, but his experience in the universe and, and how I could catch on to that. So that's my interest, and that's what I'll talk about. Uh, now to say, is Sao Tome right, or Nado right, or Joe Schmo right? It's like, figure that out. Figure that out. Okay. Uh, you know, one, one thing I'd like to say is that, you know, this past year, we've really all been off the mat. And I think it's been a challenge for all of us to uh, figure out uh, how to be on the mat, off the mat. And I think that your teaching over these years and just your dedication to this art and this process that you learned and sharing with us really has been an opportunity for us to challenge ourselves and all of the people that have been in the dojo as to how we take this off the mat, how we actually are in a way that our Aikido comes through us, not only on the mat, which has been a blast and fun and great and challenging and a fantastic learning environment, but also how we bring it into the world. And uh, so for that, I am sure and everyone else just, you know, thank you very deeply for that because it's been a very real experience and genuine, I think, for everybody that's uh, come in contact with you and what you have to share uh, with all of us, so. Yeah, that piece, uh, 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 that was Roy, yeah. That piece is very important to me. I was uh, so happy to hear Susan say that she's developed a hell of a lot in the last six months with her inner inquiry and how she's developed better at work and in her profession. Uh, it's like, yes, I, I Ooh, I gotta be careful here. Uh, nothing wrong with a dojo or training in a dojo, but but I, I sometimes feel sad if I feel people sort of say, I can't go to the dojo, my life is ending, how horrible. And there's Susan with, wow, I've really de been developing, especially this last six months. She's not talking dojo practice, she's talking inner practice. So I like the inner work. And uh, Dojo helped you fine, but I think if we're really developing, we can develop without a Dojo. If that's what's happening, and apparently it's happening, <laughs> okay? But to, uh, to not develop, because you don't have Tatami to stand on, to me is sad. I'm, I'm sorry, it's sad. But that's where I come from, so what, whatever. I'm going to alienate enough people here, I better shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as Mort Solo was used to end his act, is there anyone I haven't offended? <laughs> I was like that one where the guy 
the, the teacher turns around and sees a crowd of people walking, following him. And he says, oh my, where have I gone wrong? <laughs> Love that one. Well, this is Marin out in the East Coast. I definitely miss all you guys. Uh, it's been a while, especially since we haven't had these seminars uh, this year, obviously last year, um, but definitely um, the teachings that you brought to me many years ago, uh, even though I've been traveling different places and such has definitely stayed with me. And um, it's great to see everybody and uh, be able to participate with everybody. So thank you all very, very much for these teachings and to those and say for, for all of your teachings too. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone, I think that we're uh, reaching the end of our allotted time and uh, and a few minutes past that. Nado Sensei, thank you for coming in uh, and joining us in these final moments. I want to thank all the instructors and everybody who devoted their time and attention to these uh, to these lessons and these practices these last four weeks. It's the path of Aikido and uh, keep on trucking. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. And we're out. Hang on a second. Let's see what's left here. Danny? Yo. Hey, Danny, I just, just wanted to um, share something. I had a flash the other night. And um, I would, with your permission, just like to ask you if you've had any contact with Shane. Um, and, uh, and I just had this thing, if it felt right, you know, to, to ask you and Mike to just kind of check in on the boy and let him know that we still love him and stuff. Well, I don't know where that came from, and I don't mean to put anything on you, so you know you should know that. But Richard, I'd love to check in with him again, but I'm not going to. Uh, the last time I did, I basically basically got told, not now, not ever. You know, I think, um, yeah, you know him, I know him. Yeah, best we can do is just send him love, but taxi. He's not open to contact. Yeah, Please. good enough. I appreciate it. That that's that's good. Yeah. Okay, everybody, we are gonna close out the Zoom session. So thanks for that. Thanks everybody. Good night. <laughs>